What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. So if you've got smaller biceps or lagging biceps and you wanna do something about it, I'm gonna show you today exactly what to do. Now, I know that it's not just biceps, a lot of us have multiple muscle groups that are lagging, a little bit slow to grow, so that means I'm going to cover all of them. I'm gonna make sure we do a whole series on this on how to get that lagging muscle group growing and to make sure that you don't miss any of these, obviously you have to subscribe, but do me a favor and also turn on that notification bell so you can make sure that you don't miss any of these videos in the series. Now let's do this together, okay? Because I'm gonna make this an interactive video because I want you to feel this right away and see what the problem is so you can become more aware of how to fix it. First thing we're gonna do, I want you to take your arm right here and put it at your side and squeeze. Okay, I want you to flex your bicep as hard as you possibly can. Do you feel any discomfort here? Okay, just make note. Do you have any discomfort in your bicep? I could tell you I actually have some discomfort here, right? But now we can make it more intense. Bring that arm out in front of your body a little bit more and then supinate the wrist. Okay, so now when I squeeze, you can see this thing's almost ready to pop, right? But the fact is, you may not be feeling much. I mean, I want you to actually feel like a, a, a contraction discomfort where you really don't want to hold this that much more. Okay, if you don't feel it here, you've got problems, okay? They're worse than if you don't feel it here. Some guys won't feel it here. If you don't feel it here, you have problems. Now, we go to stage three and I bring it all the way up as if I'm gonna flex my arm up here. And again, I'm twisting, I'm supinating, and I'm squeezing as hard as I possibly can. Now, this is very, very, very uncomfortable for me. If this is not uncomfortable for you to the point where you actually have to stop because it's starting to cramp up, then I've identified your problem for you. What it means is you do not have a good mind-muscle connection with that muscle. And you might have heard that term thrown around before, and some guys even refer to it in PubMed studies ridiculously. The fact is, it actually matters. It matters a lot. Because if you can't feel the muscle contract, then what is the additional work going to do? Go back to a scenario someone might have told you, do specialization work. Do an extra bicep specialization day in your training. What good is it? You can do all the specialization work you want, the additional bicep curls and concentration curls or whatever. If you don't have a good connection with the muscle, you think it's going to respond? You would have been better off actually doing more volume in the form of maybe another pull day, maybe a lighter pull day where you can get at least some side benefits for your back by doing extra weighted chins or underhand rows, right? But, but not through additional specialization because it's not working. But it doesn't mean that specialization won't work if you first develop that mind-muscle connection. So here's all you have to do, okay? Follow along with me here. What you want to do is you want to start, again, two or three times a week. And I'm going to explain why you can tolerate this kind of volume without any repercussions. You're going to grab a pair of dumbbells and you're going to put them and almost mimic that sequence once again. So you put them at your side here as if you're doing that mid portion of a curl. And what you want to do is squeeze as hard as you can for 45 seconds and go through just a small little pulsing contraction up and down, an inch up and an inch down. Okay, with the goal being to see if you can intensify that contraction to start to feel some discomfort in there with the use of the weight. Now, the weight does not have to be heavy. You can use very light weights here. It's just a fact to put yourself in a position to mimic the same action I had you go through before. Now, after that, you do that two times for 45 seconds. The next thing you do is you want to get into a position or an exercise that sort of mimics that secondary position, which is the arm out in front of the body, a little bit more supination. And we could do that with a spider curl position that you see me here. Now the same thing applies here. I'm going to get up into that position, get to a contraction, have the forearm supinated, squeeze as hard as I possibly can, hope to feel more discomfort, and pulse a little bit in that top position. Up and down, up and down. Just a, a, an inch up and an inch down. Again, the weights are secondary here. They do not have to be that heavy. You're going for that connection between your brain and that muscle. In this case, the biceps. Again, 45 seconds, twice. Then finally, we're going to go and we're going to grab either a band if you're going to be training at home or a cable machine if you're training in the gym. And you want to mimic that same last position, which was basically that bicep flex position. So we're going to do the cable curl down to a flex position here. And when you have it there, you want to go and pulse again, once again, up an inch and down an inch for another 45 seconds per arm. Now, if you do this whole thing, it only comes out to be about six minutes of activation work. I know I did a, a sore in six minutes series before, Well, let's call this the size in six minutes. Now, don't be confused. This is not a size building activity here. It's not. We're talking about isometrics and light dumbbells. What this is, is the activation necessary to unlock the size. So if you do go back to doing specialization bicep work, it actually might work now. If you do decide to do more of a pull workout, you're not, you're not caring as much about aesthetics as you are more about function, at least the secondary pull workout will now start to get more contribution from the biceps instead of letting the back dominate every move you do because you have more activation and awareness between the mind and the muscle here in the biceps. So you do this as the gatekeeper 
to the size. Okay, and the key is this, it's, uh, you're able to do it two or three times a week. Additionally, number one, because it's short. Number two, you don't have any eccentric overload here. Number three, you're not getting a whole hell of a lot of metabolic buildup. So these methods that might cause some soreness that would prevent you from doing this are not in place. This is literally a neuromuscular re-education activity that can be done more frequently. And the way you can simply retest is from week to week, do the contraction sequence and see if you can start getting sore. And ideally, to the point where even when you're down here, you're feeling some contraction soreness here as well, right? Some, some discomfort. Guys, if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step program that puts real science, not just PubMed studies, but real science in everything we do, it's all available over at Athlanics.com. And remember, like I said, you don't want to miss any of these in this series because I'm going to try to help you with every single muscle group regardless which area is stubborn for you. Turn on those notifications and subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, we'll be back here again in just a few days. See you.